Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you want to design and build a beautiful website, you can do it all in one place with Squarespace. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome back to the first real studio vlog of the year. It's been a busy day, not stressful, just busy. Um, and it's actually the end of the workday now. It's about 4 p.m. I will stay a little later today because I have a soft deadline. There is going to be a publication with 100 or so artworks in it that's going to be sold. The proceeds will go to charity and then also the originals that are in the book are also gonna be auctioned off and go to charity too. So I'm really excited to be part of that. We're gonna do some brainstorming and I have no idea what I'm gonna do at this point. It's about flowers that already appears in my work. So I'm very confident I'll have something um, stored somewhere. Something will be in these, just have to find it. <laughs> I'm gonna do some sketching in a sketchbook. I feel like sketching traditionally today. First of many interesting decisions. Which sketchbook do I want to use? Huh. Is this good? Is this full? Yeah, this is almost a retirement. Oh my God, this is from when I was 21. Oh, these are drawings from, pa like this is when I started Instagram because I remember posting these on Instagram. Does anyone remember this? Anyway, let's shove that away somewhere. What a nice little throwback. Is this bare? This has space, let's use this. Okay. All right, let's do some brainstorming. So this project is like kind of like using flowers because there is similarity to like the human spirit and flowers in terms of like regrowth, regeneration, in terms of blooming, in terms of, you know, enduring hardship of being able to make it through, things like that, perseverance. As you can see with my pot plants in my studio, they will still thrive after Many, 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 many weeks of neglect, unfortunately, for them. My initial idea was kind of, I see this image that's like a flower, one that has an open top like this. Could be a tulip or it could be like a waratarish kind of thing. A girl or somebody in it. And then their arms are like imitating the leaves of flowers, but they're like holding up like another miniature version of a flower. And she looks kind of like peaceful. That's the vibe I want. Lila has the same face as her. I've done this before. I feel like it should be the other one because it kind of more resembles her arms. Yeah, I like this idea and often I do really go with the first idea that I have, but let's also figure something else out. Another idea I have is like a metaphor for at the core, we're kind of all the same, which is like at the root, at the bulb, we're all the same. And then maybe our flowers are different. So I don't know if it's possible. This one's going to be a bit more difficult. And I think with the time constraints, maybe I'm going to have to leave this for another time. But overlaying all the flowers that my work was within. So there's this one. There's the one that's like this. So we do this as well. And they're kind of all like painted on top of each other. But the base is the sharpest part because these are like, do you know what I mean? Like these semi-drawn semi translucently, maybe it's with ink. But this is kind of harder to understand if you don't have the reference to my work which people that are viewing the project might not so maybe this one's one that I save for some other time um other ones I'm thinking like something like a daisy chain because I feel that like a daisy chain is kind of like oh no you know we're all connected in some way we're like linked up togetherness and the importance of that yeah, I really like this idea. I think I'm going to go with this idea, although I did some, do something similar recently for Peach Tober. I'll show you actually because I've got my prints back for my Peach Tober drop, which is now probably going to happen in February. These are not originals. These are paint. These are prints. These are clay prints. They are so beautifully saturated. What I was talking about that is similar to this is this, and I, I honestly expect it to look semi the same as this. I love like this deep red, but it's just like... The girl's gonna be like bigger and holding another flower. So it's actually gonna be very similar to this. Okay, so let's do some sketching on my tablet. Let's just jump into it. My theme of the year is like, be, trust yourself and be decisive. You can always go back to square one if we don't like it. What I'm gonna do is, this is quite a symmetri symmetrical piece. So I'm gonna use the drawing guide symmetry setting so that I can draw it on. This is just like an A4. Oh, don't tell me. Every time, and it's always on camera, so you guys know that it's true. The symmetry setting just means that when you draw one thing, the other side follows, you know? So it would be something like this. Finger digital drawing. <laughs> and then later we can like 
add something else, like whether it goes to the side or something, you know. This is just um, acting as a guide at this point. And then I'll go over it in black and then I'll trace it onto some paper. I'm really excited for my feedback to come back for the picture book I'm working on because I'm excited to start on the final artwork. I like don't do that well when I only have personal work or non-commercial projects because then I feel like aimless or directionless maybe is the right word. We want to have a face and I want the face to be there so then we'll decide where the arms go after. Oh she's so cute. is a little smaller since we're gonna have to have the arms come up. <laughs> I love this setting, it's so fun to play with and like ideas can be flushed out so quickly. I also love a symmetrical piece, there's something so harmonious about it to look at. Maybe a rainbow would be interesting. The idea of the rainbow. I love the repetition of these curves and then there's gonna obviously be lines for the fact that it's a rainbow. Let's do the dark. We're just gonna do that on a new layer which will end up being our refined sketch. Sweetie, can I do my light boxing in here because I can see the image better? Thanks. Finished.
Okay, hello everybody. Oh, I'll get the final artwork okay, actually. What do you think? I love it. This is, it is very similar to the one I did for Peachtober, but the blues are a lot brighter. I love that I'm getting more comfortable leaving these gradients for more than just things like stars and the, ed the edge lighting kind of effect that I do. But I'm really excited for this year. This is the first proper painting of 2024. I almost said 2023. I love these colors together. This is a new introduction too. I know that it probably doesn't seem like there's anything new. It does look like consistent with all of my other work, but it's just always adding something, a little bit something new, you know? I notice it because it's a deliberate choice. What do you think? I know some of you enjoy like ASMR painting sounds, but the reason I can't do that is one, like I have asthma, so my breathing is pretty loud. And two, I love like blasting music and singing along to music and I showed a bit of that to you too. Imagine that. Like, and sometimes it's not music that is very like non-abrasive to the ears, I feel. So yeah, that's why. I would love to do like painting ASMR, but I just don't think I'm cut out for it, you know? Never say never. Maybe some miracles will happen. But anyway, as promised, I want to do some Q and A's at the end of my videos. Let's jump into it. I want to say a big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video as per usual. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you will have seen my website tip for this month, which was to put on your viewer goggles. This means being thoughtful about how you organize your website so that it appeals to the people you want looking at it. Ask yourself, who will be using your website? What is the most relevant page for them to see? And how do you make it as easy as possible to find everything that they need? Because the more clicks it takes to find what they're looking for, the more likely they'll click away before they find it. If you want to attract more clients, you want to have a portfolio as your homepage. If you want to attract customers, you want a shop page to be the center of your website. And if you want to build a space to connect with your audience, maybe a blog should be front and center. For me, it's all three. And if that's true for you too, it's just about thoughtfully building a hierarchy for all of these things and organizing your site accordingly. You guys know Squarespace is my fave. And one of the reasons why is there are so many different types of pages you can create to suit any need you'll have. And organizing them is as easy as dragging and dropping. If you guys have never used Squarespace before, go to squarespace.com slash for a little pinch. You get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. You know, we love Squarespace in this house, in the studio, in this world. So let's jump into the questions. I actually have quite a few questions about cameras and like what I use to vlog and things like that. This one says, I tend to record on my phone because it's always with me. Do you have a camera with you all the time? I'd like to level up my quality and make my videos and footage more cinematic. Someone else also said, do you or Rocket have any video camera recommendation for someone who's just starting out blogging and filming content for their art? Ideally affordable and easy to carry around. Thank you. I actually think the most affordable and best camera for vlogging is your phone. So I would invest in like a phone that can shoot in 4K. I use the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. I've had it for a couple of years. I love the camera on it. A lot of my recent vlogs have been shooting with that because it's not like giant. I feel really self-conscious when I'm out and about shooting because I just feel like people are aware that you have a camera if it's not a phone. Um, and I do think the footage from this is pretty good. Um, make sure that it's set to, I set mine to ult UHD Ultra HD 30 and um, make sure that when you're setting up your video files, it's in 4K. That's my advice. Other than that, I have a Canon RP, something I used to use more. I actually haven't used it for a long time because I think my lens is broken and I just haven't gotten it serviced. I need to do that. When I do sit down videos and it looks really crispy, really nice. And the Tokyo vlogs from last year, a year ago, were shot on Rocket's Black Magic. So that gives you an idea of like the range of things. We've, we've got my phone and then we've got a cinema camera and then we've got a few cameras in between. But I just think that like the most important thing is like telling your story and capturing things, whatever allows you and enables you to like capture your life in a more comfortable way. Because the biggest thing when you start filming your life is feeling awkward or beginning being a hurdle. I just think like a phone is like a really easy thing for that. If I was starting out again, I would just get a phone that shoots really nice video quality and then just like a simple tripod. That's all I would get because you want it to be easy and you want it to be chill and you want it to be light and you want to be able to carry it everywhere. I use a Gorillapod when I'm out, the phone holder, and in here I use like a C stand, which is usually made for lights. In my opinion, gear is not that important. I think audio would be the first thing you want to level up. You want to have a phone and then audio. That's what I would do. If you're starting to make money from like documenting your process, I would then upgrade the cameras to something more pretty when you have like an idea of that. But I just think the phone is enough. Like that's just my opinion. And because you already need to buy a phone, it's kind of like getting a discount if you're, you know what I mean? Like you're not buying, you've got your phone for your everyday life, which is however much because phones are X amount these days. And then you've got your then having to spend on camera. I just think it's worth investing in like a good phone camera. That way, like you can film for like reels and for vlogs at the same time, which I like because I do both. This is a phone camera. 
Next question. Would you consider releasing the pack of your three books together when you finish this latest book? I missed out on the early ones and have FOMO. This one, the book that I'm working on currently is someone else's story. So I won't, I wouldn't be like, I don't think I'll sell that in the store. When I do my next kid's book, I will do a bundle because I like saving you guys money on shipping. I just think that shipping books is so expensive. And if you're not Amazon or like a big book retailer, like you have to charge for shipping because it's expensive, but it's not going to be for this next book that I'm working on. I don't know if it's just me, but I don't know how to find work. I don't know who to contact and where I can find those people. Do you know platforms where I can find art directors, editors, or businesses that I can send my portfolio to? Maybe in the editorial line. Feels like I haven't been looking in the right places and I really want to actually get well paid for my art. I think what you should be looking for if you want to get well paid for your art is advertising jobs because like as in illustration app for advertising because that's where the money is. However, if you want to get paid for your work in general and you're not getting paid at the moment, um, things that I haven't reached out to someone in a long time and because I have like an agent I don't usually have to do that however sometimes it's just as easy as dming the company you want to work for and asking for a contact sometimes you can go onto a website there's often like a contact page or a media page that you can contact and ask for the relevant contact for sending your portfolio in but yeah I would just like have a dig it's it's never going to be like there because like putting your email on the internet is just an invitation for spam this is so not relevant now because it's not like a website anymore but when I was younger and I got my first projects with like bands that I loved I had just went onto their MySpace and I just found all the emails on MySpace and I emailed portfo my portfolio to all of the emails that I could find on that website not the best because I didn't know if I should have just like email the managers but like I emailed everyone anyway um but yeah there's there's no harm in doing that the worst thing that can happen to you in your mind is saying them saying no but the best thing is like you getting your dreams coming true so like pretty good trade-off in my opinion you must work with a huge number of files between youtube and art what is your file management system like okay i am pretty good you, my desktop is hideous look at this yuck <laughs> screenshot fiend but my actual file management is pretty good i have my favorite hard drive, so okay, I, I save a lot of my stuff to Dropbox and these external hard drives. These are by Samsung. These are so big, like as in like big in, in space, like gigabytes and terabytes, but they're so small in like compactness. So this is what I suggest. I use these as well because they're quick. Um, my working hard drives are these um, and I'll dump stuff onto these. I've got like six of these. And then when I'm desperate and I need to get things off of these because I need more space on these, I'll put them on these very slow but very large hard drives that just have like archives of video content and stuff like that. Um, I usually have one hard drive that's for like working stuff, like illustration work, clients, um, if, uh, the store assets and things like that, website assets. And then I have like a lot for like video archive video files and stuff i like to separate it like that one that's working for everything and then one that's like current project if you're working on something big like a video because it takes up so much space especially if you're shooting in 4k this is why i don't like 4k like obviously i like the look of 4k but i've been resist i was resistant to it for so long because of like how big the files are and i just hate that um but yeah and then when i when i need to send stuff to clients or i want to make sure that i have another backup of something if it's really important i put it on dropbox so if it's like store stuff it's flp store if it's client stuff it says client and within that's the client names and then within that within that's the year and then with that in that's the project because some some of my clients like for example squarespace samsung adobe i've worked with them for like over seven years so there's like a lot of content and a lot of stuff to to manage it. But I'm just dumping it, dumping it inside the client folder. It would just be messy. That's my advice. I don't know if that's if that is a good explanation. But the desktop, horrible. <laughs> Yuck, I'm ashamed of this. I'm showing you because I want to change. If you guys have any questions for my next studio vlog, uh, hashtag answer me peach and I will I will check them out. If you enjoyed this video and I'll see you very soon. We are literally going to Seoul in a couple weeks. I'm so excited. I've never been. I'm scared. If you have any recommendations, leave them in the comments too, please, because I need them. I have no idea what I'm getting myself into and I'm very bad at organizing trips. Bye.